tense at last night's weigh-in when matters became more serious and the appointed hour drew ever closer. Eight stone, 13 for the challenger. The champion slightly heavier and totally focused now. Eight stone, 13 and three quarters. My mind's on the fight, my mind's on knocking somebody out because looking at him in the weigh-in, in his eyes, I can tell that I'm going to take him out. How do you think he felt at the weigh-in? I reckon he might have felt a little bit confident, but I think the more the time is passing through for the fight, it's getting to him and getting to him and getting to him. The pressure, the more he's looking at the press, the more he knows how big the fight is. You know, I've been there too many times, I know how big this fight is to me, do you know what I mean? It seems very friendly though, no animosity this week. He's all right, do you know what I mean? He knows he's going to get knocked out, he don't want to go too far, because then I will bang him out in the first. What about we the don't want that. What about the sixth round prediction? There's why, no why sixth... Is he, why is he saying the sixth round? I ain't got a clue, you know. I ain't really got a clue because he has funny dreams, this kid. Billy Hardy's fairy tale lasted just 93 seconds, as Naz had predicted. For this, he says round two, the same one that finished his last Argentinian opponent, Molina. I was with him late last night as he relaxed and shared his final thoughts. What goes through your mind in the last couple of hours? Um, as, as I say, every fight, just being victorious, knocking somebody out, um, feeling so cool, calm and collective, you know collected and just ready to go out there and basically dismantle, knock out a man. All I want to do is get in, take somebody out in such a fashion, such, so stylish, do you know what I mean? To give the crowd a show? Yeah, give the crowd a show, and it, plus it's Wembley Arena, you know? And then after that, we're going to party, do you know what I mean? All right. <laughs> Usually it's the... Right hand and a thunderous left. Huge right hand. There's that power again. A right uppercut. Nobody could have taken that. I know he's going to get knocked out. I can feel it. This incredible self-confidence, which has seemed to, which has happened for him, Jim, in four years. Just over four years ago, he fought here as a youngster on the undercard at Wembley. Nobody really knew what was going to happen in the interim. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the, the problem now is, of course, that if he starts thinking it's an easy game he's in, because everything has come to him so easily, but it's not an easy game. I'd love to see someone good enough just to give him a real test, make him work hard, dig deep, just to know exactly what he's got. We know the talent he has. But now, making his way to the ring, the challenger, Juan Cabrera. Room and he is working to an entirely different beat. Yeah. 
Cabrera's being kept waiting, Glenn. Yes, I'm sure he's, he's not used to this sort of atmosphere. He's never been amongst anything like this, and he's going to be ready for the, the Hamed entrance, which always gets better and better. Naz loves this. He loves the limelight. He loves the stage where he can perform. And he's going to be ready for this one. Cabrera, I'm sure, will never have seen anything quite like the entrance show that Prince Nassim Hamid is about to unveil. Most of his recent opponents knew all about it and sat with a towel over their head and uh, listening to a Walkman. But I get the impression with Cabrera, nothing much bothers him at all. No, he seems the sort of hard character that doesn't really get put off by things like this. He certainly has been very, very confident in the build-up. He's been cocky enough to say he's going to knock Naz out and spoil the party in the sixth round. Promoters like him for that kind of talk, of course. Well, it's very good. Let, you know, let's hope he has the, that same self-belief. Let's hope he, you know, he believes in himself and he thinks he can do it and he goes out there to, to, you know, to really try hard and give it his best shot. Prince Nassim Hamed, his name being chanted now around the arena. People becoming impatient for his entrance, but uh, like some actor on the big stage, he's uh, making them wait. And now, making his entrance to the ring, the defending champion, your Prince Nassim Hamed. in this very famous arena where some of the biggest names in British boxing have appeared in the modern era. Names like Alan Minter, and Kevin and Chris Fanagan. Marvin Hagler won his world middleweight title here on that infamous night of the riot against Alan Minter. Morris Hope, Charlie Magri, Barry McGuigan, Lloyd Hunnigan, Frank Bruno, Lennox Lewis, John Conte, Henry Cooper, Joe Buckner, they've all appeared here. And now, for the first time in this arena, not the conference hall, just across the road, the modern star, Prince Nassim Hamid, makes his entrance. And often these entrances last longer than the fight, Glenn. <laughs> well, he's certainly making the most of it. He's been back and forth about five times. He really enjoys this. It's a stage, he loves being the, in the, the centre of it. He loves being the attraction. And this is where he performs best. He's very relaxed under you know, what should be immense pressure. 
but he's very, very relaxed. He really loves being out there. There's been a lot of comment about Naz ring entrances and uh, the merit of them, but I think in a way, the serious side of this is that this is his way of getting his adrenaline level up and preparing himself. Yes, I, I think it works well for him. He does, he, he gets himself focused on the ring walk, he gets himself into it, he gets his rhythm, you know, he starts enjoying himself, he starts to get, you know, to get a sweat on, and I, I think it is, I think this way, this is where he does his mental preparation on the way from the dressing room to the ring, he really starts to focus in. Big crowd at Wembley Arena. He's a huge ticket seller now. His biggest rivals tonight, apart from Cabrera, may be complacency, smugness, and overconfidence. Sometimes, with assignments like this, things can go horribly wrong. They certainly can. I've watched Cabrera, Cabrera throughout all of that. He's never took his gears off Hamed. He's watched his whole walk into the ring, and he's standing there, he's bouncing, and he's smiling at Naz. This fight going live to America. I wonder what the hardened fight fans there are going to make of all these acrobatics. This fight going out on ABC television in the United States in their Saturday afternoon sports show. So it's a big showcase for Prince Nassim here to impress the American audience tonight. He's a year older than Cabrera, at 23, Prince Nassim. Cabrera with a height and reach advantage there, both inside the nine stone limit. Same number of fights, but look at the knockout percentage at the bottom there for Prince Nassim, 92%. Only two men have gone the distance with him. Cabrera's been a puncher at his level, but uh, that's in italics, at his level. WBO rules. Tonight, mandatory eight count, no standing eight. The three knockdown rule will be in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. The bell saves the fighter only in the last round. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening, sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Supervisor for the BBBC is Lord Brooks of Tramorfa. Also sanctioned by the WPO and the IBF. Supervisor at ringside, Jacinth Bryant of San Martin. Your timekeeper is Nick White. The three judges scoring this bout will be Harold Gomez, John Stewart, and Dale Grable. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Warren and Sports Network Europe, in association with ART, present... 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action will be Mr. Lou Moret from California, USA. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the 10,000 plus in attendance here at Wembley Arena and the tens of millions watching around the world, from London, England, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Into the scene first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white and weighing eight stone, 13 pounds. His professional record in 26 bouts, he has 24 victories and has demonstrated his knockout power with 20 KOs. He has only two defeats in his career. Ladies and gentlemen, from Cordoba, Argentina, here is the challenger, Juan Cabrera. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing leopard trimmed with black and white. His weight, 11 stone, pardon me, 8 stone, 13 and 3 quarter pounds. His professional record, a perfect 26 consecutive victories without a loss. 
24 by knockout, and he has won two world title belts. He is considered by many to be pound for pound among the best in boxing today. Trading out of Sheffield, England, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated WBO IBF featherweight champion of the world, your prince, Nazim. Well, the last two times that the Prince has fought Argentinian opposition, he's finished them off in the second round, and he says that is exactly what he intends to do with Juan Cabrera. Although his trainer, Brendan Ingle, says that the way Nassim has been punching in the gym, he expects it to be over in one round. Cabrera will have other ideas, but is he really good enough? Don't go and make the tea or coffee now. Due to go 12, but Prince Nassim has won his last 14 by stoppage or knockout over the last three years. How can Cabrera cope with this massive step up in class from what he's been used to? And how is he going to cope with the style of Ahmed? He's, he's never seen anything like this. He switch hits with awesome power in both hands. What's it going to be like when he feels the power of Hamed? You almost get the impression with Hamed these days that he looks to make his prediction come true. He almost seems to soft pedal until he gets to the round that he's predicted. He's that confident about his own ability. And to be fair to him, quite often in the past, he's been proved exactly right. are so fast, the punches come from such unusual angles that most of his opponents find it an extremely bewildering experience just to be in there with him. Oh, big right uppercut, that corkscrew right uppercut, which is a trademark punch, one he has invented himself, and Cabrera just did not see where that came from, but he took the punch. Yes, he took it quite well. He crouches over, open for the uppercut, and Hamed landed that beautifully. He led with the, the right hand and just twisted it into a long uppercut. Trying to invite Cabrera in with the hope of countering him. Don't think Cabrera has managed to land so far. But Prince Nassim found out against Daniel Alicia that if he gets careless, he could get caught with a sucker punch. That was the only time he's been on the floor so far. And he got up to win it in the next round. Mohamed invites opponents to make mistakes, and then he capitalises on it. There's great power. He's just waiting for Cabrera to try and lurch at him, and then he'll have a punch for him. It's the usual flash. Brash, cocky display from Prince Nassim. Cabrera trying to keep very tight, punched over, keeping his guard really up, not wanting to make any mistakes. Coming towards the end of round one, another big left hand goes through. Again, Cabrera took the punch well. Not all the previous Nassim opponents have shown even that durability. He will come. Ah, you will fall before him. You will listen to what he has to say. He will not be defeated. Listen, You're too late. He's already here. He is. Welcome back to Wembley Arena. We saw in that first round from Prince Nassim Hamid one of his trademark shots there. Yes, wasn't it beautiful? Led with the, the right hand. Just 
turned it up. A little bit more action here later in the round, the right and the left, and you see he's he's very, very wary, Cabrera, of the power of Hamid. Well, this is the round that he says he will finish Cabrera in. Round two. This is his favourite round, Prince Nassim, and watch for him to go all out to make it happen. Cabrera knows about the prediction as well, though. Left hand thudding through. He's keeping those gloves up very hard, but he's caught by the right uppercut, left the cap. Prince Nassim's going for the finish now. Well, he took some very heavy punches there, Cabrera, took them quite well, and another one, again the uppercut, long right hand punch from Hamed. Cabrera, totally in defensive mode at the moment, just looking to survive, trying to find some kind of foothold in the fight. Hit by the left hand, the hand speed befuddling him. I guess he's walking on to the left hook now. Hamed getting more power in that punch. Really going for it now. He's going for the stoppage. He's got him going. Send him reeling backwards with the latest left hand. He's stopping it. He's stopping it. And this is a painful experience for Cabrera. Coming in as a late substitute. And moving up from the equivalent of the Vauxhall Conference to the Premier League. People now talking about Prince Nassim as maybe one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Blood around the eyes of Cabrera as well. He's looking bad. The nose looks injured, He's the left eye swelling. Badly marked and damaged around the face already from the power of these blows. From this venomous punching featherweight who gets in again with the left hand. Prince Nassim is just toying with him at the moment in there. Another huge left. The class gap is massive. He's finding terrific angles here, bringing them off, bringing them round. Another good left hand. And Cabrera is stopped in the second round, just as he predicted. Cabrera hardly landed a punch. And again, he makes the forecast come true. Totally, totally one-sided, embarrassingly so, in fact. Yes, total confidence, total class. He had all the time in the world to pick his punches. He did that ever so well. He brought them, lots of them, up right through the middle of the defence. Cabrera was just struggling to find any, any sort of foothold in the fight whatsoever. Ahmed did exactly as he liked, and I'm sure he's left, left a big impression to the fans and to the boxing fans watching in America. I don't think Prince Nassim Hamid proved anything tonight that we didn't already know about him, that he has huge power, and that anyone coming from the class of Juan Cabrera, who's just been a sort of useful 10-round fighter in Argentina, who's never even fought for his national title, was never going to be able to cope with his speed and power and talent and class. Yes, he's proved himself time and time again. He's certainly an exceptional talent. I think we can see the stoppage there. Again, that trademark right hand turns into an uppercut. Another powerful left. He's in all sorts of disarray. He's badly marked, badly hurt. And the referee, I thought, was, was right to stop it there. He was only going to get hurt more and more. And it was a good time. We see it again there. The terrific uppercut punching there from Hamed. He was already badly injured here. Cabrera, there was blood from the nose, there was eye damage already, he'd taken a lot, Hamid just kept on finding the angles, and it was another demolition job. And he's glad it's over, I would think, Cabrera. But you have to say now, talking about Prince Nassim Hamid, looking at the big punches of featherweight history, people like Terry McGovern around the turn of the century, Sandy Sadler, Sugar Ramos, Danny Lopez, uh, Ide Joffre and Ruben Olivares who went into the division later. You'd have to put this man up there alongside them, wouldn't you now? You certainly do. He's, he's such a, a good fighter, such a big, big punch. And I think, you know, he, I think you've got to give him respect. It was so easy in a world title fight. He made it look simple. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Lou Moret calls a halt to the bout.
at two minutes, 17 seconds of round number two. The winner by knockout victory, he is still the undefeated WBO IBF heavyweight champion of the world, your Prince Nazim. So another promise fulfilled by Prince Nassim Hamid. This performance was watched coast to coast live on terrestrial television in America. And I think the message is getting out, not just in Britain now, but internationally, that this is a very special boxing commodity. Minister of Sport among the people who've um, thought it worth... Recording this performance, there's his father who, of course, comes to all his displays. And a better reception leaving the ring, I have to say, for Cabrera, and a more sporting reception than he got on the way into the ring here tonight. But this is another page in the Prince Nassim Mohammed story. Where would it all end? Well, he dreams of unifying this crown and then moving up and up. And right now, every wild ambition is still on the course. Is there anybody out there who can dish out some of the same medicine to this man? Well, we all wait. That's why we show up for these, isn't it? To find out if one day it could all come unstuck. But so far, so perfect for Prince Nassim Hamid. And the show is as effective as his punch power once the first bell goes. Right, I think he's ready to talk to Ian Dark now. Naz, congratulations. Still the champion. You said round two, and it was round two. Well, I predicted the last one. I predicted this one. Do you know what I mean? How come they're coming true all of a sudden? You've got to start knowing that my predictions are coming true, and you know what I mean? You've got to be, start, you've got to be a believer now. You were going on coast to coast in the United States. Big showcase for you tonight. How important was it for you to put on a show there as well as here? Very important. I think now the Americans know that the best featherweight in the world is from Sheffield. He's an Arab, British Arab. He's from Sheffield. And he's absolutely doing it, do you know what I mean? Uh, I predicted this fight and I knew basically my ability and I knew my strength. Again, same usual uh, fight. Fight comes over, so he's gonna knock me out in six. I predict he gets knocked, knocked out in second. It happens again, thank God, love God. We've had a lot of messy, bad PR for boxing in the last couple of weeks, well publicised, everybody knows about that. How important was it for you to put on a bit of a show, do a bit of a PR job tonight for the sport? Again, very important, because uh, my ability just shows, my, my confidence rises with my ability, and as I say, I, I, I know what to do, basically, and I know, basically, how to entertain people, entertain the television, and I'm sure the American people, as far as, and the British people, especially in the arena, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and supporting the Prince. I think everybody knows you're the biggest punching featherweight in the world. Do you think now that pound for pound, with all the divisions, you're the biggest punching fighter out there? I don't think I know. I know, basically. Again, this fighter came from Argentina and said he was stronger than me and this and that. Uh, what can I say? You saw the power for yourself. I said, once you're going to take the power, he's going to get stopped. The referee looked in his eyes, one eye was, one eye was just closed completely. And when you're getting, t when you're getting hit with shots of mine, you can't go past the second round. The WBC champion is Lucito Espinosa. He doesn't seem to want to know about you. I think he, he, he's seen you enough and doesn't want to get in there with you. What about uh, the WBA champion, Naz, Wilfredo Vasquez? Do you, do you fancy going in with him next? I'd love to box him. I'd love to box anybody. I'd knock any featherweight out. Do you know what I mean? All I have to do is turn up. I've already won. A question I have to put to you is, um, I noticed a couple of fights ago, I noticed a couple of fights ago, you were, you were getting a few bo boos mixed in with all the cheers. Tonight it seemed to be universal cheers. You seem to be winning a bit of a popularity contest. Can't, we can't remember the boos. Can anybody remember the boos? You trying to rile everybody up and be controversial. That's all you trying to do. You trying to cause the name of yourself for the prince. 
You're just trying to sell yourself and being a little bit controversial. Nobody's out there booing me. You've seen this cheer tonight. You've seen my last fights. It's a load of rubbish. You know I don't get booze. End of the day, I'd like to thank all the fans. Respect to Adidas. And uh, full credit to the concert of Michael Jackson. Wicked performer, do you know what I mean? Respect to Michael, man. Thanks a lot, Nash. Let's bring in Frank Warren. Frank, what, what is the plan now? We've had all this talk about unifying the title. Is it going to happen? Well, the problem was, was uh, that Vasquez has a fight on the 23rd of August. We've got to get that out of the way. Don't go on the 23rd of August. And uh, Espinosa got badly cut in his last fight, so he's out until October. Hopefully, we can make one of those fights next time. That's what we're trying to do. We're working hard on it. But they're pricing themselves out. You know, nobody wants to get in the ring with them. You can understand why. They get in the ring. And they're fighting, they're fighting not only the, the hardest puncher pound for pound in the world, I think pound for pound he's now the best fighter in the world, without a doubt. Thanks a lot, Frank. Thank you. Thanks, Naz. Lots to come here at Wembley. Do stay with us. The thoughts of Jim Watt on this latest success for Prince Nassim Hamed. And in just a few moments from now, another very exciting British title fight. The British welterweight title defence by Kevin Lushing against Jeff McCrish. Please stick around, ladies and gentlemen. More boxing to follow.